It is possible for an adult and a child to have a sexual relationship and for it to have positive outcomes on the child as well. Pedophiles, right, who buy child pornography, mm -hmm. would you say they should not be held responsible for doing that? Yes. I have yet to hear a convincing moral or legal argument as to why possession of child pornography should be illegal. We have at some point in our lives been going fucking crazy on some hentai site, and we've been fucking stro <laughs> stroking as hard and fast as we can, and then after we nut, we go back and look over our history chat, and we go like, oh, jeez. Oh, boy. Some of these girls look pretty young. Okay, I don't give a fuck. Well, sorry I'm late, guys, but it's about time that we covered this because I promised to do so in my community tab. 2024 just started, and a lot of insane events have already occurred. There's the entire fiasco with Mama Max that I covered. There's the two mad death situation where James Ski may be lying about everything. But we're going to kick things off once again with what I think is the funniest drama this year so far. Vosh is a political streamer who is known for a lot of political debates he's had. As far as I can tell, he's been streaming and going on political debates for about five or six years. Not sure on the exact time frame. How he has maintained that following, I don't know, because there had been many, many controversies regarding Vosh during his career that kind of just flew under everybody's radar for some oddball reason. One in particular is his completely bizarre take on CP. In fact, and this is going to be a real hot take, I have yet to hear a convincing moral or legal argument as to why possession of child pornography should be illegal. Actual child pornography. How's that for a hot fucking day? Now, I definitely don't think that it's a coincidence that Vosh would construct this argument several times over in his entire debate bro career, only for it to end up coming back full circle with him accidentally opening up his to be sorted folder on a recent live stream. That's the face of a man that knows he screwed up, and oh, he screwed up really hard. So despite all of this, how did Vosh maintain a fan base for so long? I think it was a very bizarre case of plausible deniability. Most people that follow Vosh have given him the benefit of the doubt that he was making a stupid argument for the sake of making a stupid argument, or that all of it is just a persona, which also includes his weird and creepy fantasies of becoming a horse. But now that it's all come full circle with Vosh exposing his own folders, those people have got to feel very stupid now. I mean, the red flags have been there since the beginning. I've seen them ever since the very first instance of Vosh defending the consumption of CP, yet nobody talked about it because... reasons, I guess. Oh, and there's a lot of contradictions to dissect here. You think that was the only clip? There's several. It's like a collection of blackmail at this point. The widespread consumption of hentai, lolicon, whatever, you know. I, um, I still think that uh, it, it, it normalizes quite negative things, you know? Well, Vosh, for somebody that thinks Lollicon is so weird and disgusting to the point somebody should be investigated, you really couldn't keep that same energy. I think you're inadvertently acknowledging that you may have an attraction to little kids, bro. You can't just sit there and say you're opposed to being attracted to that stuff when you're also on record saying shit like this. We have at some point in our lives been going fucking crazy on some hentai site, and we've been fucking stro <laughs> stroking as hard and fast as we can, and then after we nut, we go back and look over our history chat, and we go like, oh, jeez. Oh, boy. Some of these girls look pretty young. Okay, I don't give a f I don't think you can necessarily blame anybody either for thinking that Vosh is projecting in this clip. He sounds like he genuinely enjoyed watching that stuff and not taking any fault on it. Now, a lot of Vosh followers will try to argue as well that all of these clips are out of context, and I really have to beg the question on what context would there be that could make any of these clips better? Even if you dig deep into what the context actually is, it arguably makes Vosh look even worse. In this clip, he's trying to make the argument that there are healthy benefits of children being sexually harassed by adults. It is possible for an adult and a child to have a sexual relationship and for it to have positive outcomes on the child as well. That is possible. You're trying to tell me that this is out of context? There's no logical way to make any of that sound better, okay? That is a legitimate statement that Vosh has made, and people are trying to justify it. If you really think that nothing Vosh said in these clips is even remotely disturbing or incorrect, you are fucked. There's no other way of putting it. 
Oh, and naturally, because Vosh was exposed for having these types of vile pictures downloaded, the Lolly community is trying to take a W with this situation, as if their unself awareness couldn't be any more blatant. Turkey Tom, as a joke, tweets, The Lollycon community is in shambles. One person replies, Really? Because Vosh was one of you until he got caught, and frankly, he still insists he isn't. Ah, yes, guilty by association. One of the most common deflection tactics that these closeted pedophiles love to use. That's also acting like Tom was associated with Vosh to begin with. Like, I'm very positive that Turkey Tom has never once associated with Vosh in any way. Tirade about lollycons aside, Vosh decided that it'd be a good idea to address the drama on another livestream, because he's totally gonna weasel his way out of this one again. Surely if Vosh got caught doing something horrendous before, he'd get away with it again, right? Well, not really. Now because of his big blunder, a lot more people are actually going after him for it. It tore him apart so much that he's even planned a response video as of the making of this one, which of course is out now. But let's go ahead and look at the clips where Vosh defends himself. Of course, I'm talking about the clips that surfaced before he managed to get his actual response video out there, which happens while I was making this video. Anyway, one of the two images uh, just flatly didn't look like Lolly. I don't give a shit. Uh, 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 like cope, diamond. I just don't care. Like disingenuous shit, you know. The other one um, is like a th with two chicks and a guy. And in retrospect, looking at, it, knowing now that that artist is a lolicon, yeah, I can see it. When I looked at it, I think the vibe that I got was like short stack, thick kind of thing. You know what I mean? Uh, like the way uh, like goblins get drawn. I mean, bro, if you were getting your jollies off to those kinds of images before having this retrospect, then that should probably say a lot more about you. That just raises a lot more questions like, how long has Vosh had these images saved onto his computer before he had the revelation that the characters involved in those pornographic folders were lolly? How long has he been looking at these kinds of images? That's something I'm gonna want you to keep in mind for when we get to his response, by the way. And seeing as how you had this revelation right afterwards when you had that stream blunder where you accidentally showed the folder, this just sounds like you're trying to cover for yourself by attempting to make it sound not as bad as it actually is. Oh, and that's not all, folks. On top of Vosh having this revelation that the characters were underage, he also felt the need to hammer it in to his audience that he wants to become a horse and have sexual activities with women as a horse. I'll make it clear. You can write this down. I want to fuck a woman as a horse. None of this is a secret. I just to be clear, you know, many jokes have been made about this, but I stand by it. My moral principles are rock solid. I'm, I'm my feet are firmly planted in the ground. I've got my boots up. They're planted firmly. You, you cannot move me from my position. This isn't a secret. Uh, let's talk to a therapist. Well, why do you want to be the horse, Vosh? Because then I'd have a giant dick. Okay, couldn't you have an, a, a big dick the other way? Well, yeah, I could. Like, yeah, I could have a big dick hypothetically in any variety of scenarios, but then it wouldn't really be a horse dick. Well, you could be a human with a horse dick. Yes, but then I wouldn't have that powerful stallion energy using it. There you go. That's it. That's the whole thing. It really doesn't help your case that you project your sexual fantasy towards your audience right after exposing yourself having pornographic folders saved onto your computer, especially because one of the leaked images in particular also involves a lolly having intercourse with a horse. I don't know what Vosh was expecting by pointing any of this out, but he inadvertently made himself look even worse just by confirming his sexual fantasy of being a horse right after the folder was leaked. There's quite literally no other way of taking it other than Vosh was attracted to these images and it took him this long to have this revelation, but that's only because people had to tell him that what he was doing was fucked. So going off of that, if Vosh did not leak his folder accidentally, he would most likely end up still having those images and fantasizing about them. So after these events where Vosh leaked his folder and tried defending himself, naturally the commentary community piqued their interest and have discovered or came back to older clips of Vosh having extremely bizarre takes and arguments, most of which are comprised of him arguing in favor of the consumption of CP as I highlighted earlier. There's also an entire controversy that Destiny covered a while back where Vosh was sexually harassing a woman on Discord named Poppy. This happened back when he was still known as Irish Laddie, which is also related to this clip of him dehumanizing the victim in question. 
I'm not, I'm not asking you what is the most efficacious way of ending the harassment that I experience from her. Well, that, I'm asking you if she believes she is justified in engaging in that. She believes she's justified. But that doesn't matter. Oh, okay. All right. That so, okay. So here, so actually, how about Whoa. this? Okay. Well, no, 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 hold on. No, no, no. I have a great, I have a great fucking counter argument. Okay. Here's my new position. So Poppy has been lying about and harassing me on and off for the past year and a half. This actually really upsets me. So I'm declaring a fatwa on her. Okay. Uh, I think that Poppy is subhuman, and I'm perfectly 100% okay with the with the religious armies of the world bearing down upon her in a, in, a, in a bevel of swords and explosions and bullets. Whatever happens to her physical body is of not my concern, and I hope her soul is judged soundly by God. And because this is what I deem to be fair, you cannot argue with my argument here. This is my just feelings, and I am valid in those feelings. This is legit over a woman he sexually harassed, and he somehow still has a following. I mean, I could talk about a lot of other clips, but I'm gonna save that for later. It turned out that the clips from Vosh resurfacing was so bad that it brought together the likes of Ethan Klein from H3H3 and Keemstar. Two people that absolutely hate each other joined forces because of the circumstance that Vosh brought himself in. There was supposed to be a debate between Vosh and H3H3, as H3H3 reached out to Vosh in DMs with the following conversation. You're gonna have to bear with me on this one, cause this is a long conversation and there's a lot to unpack here. Would you like to call in on Monday? I know the podcast guys had DM'd you, but I thought I'd message directly. They just sent me the DMs. I understand where you're coming from, it's pretty heated, although I genuinely don't know what or how my comments were bad faith. I'd personally be interested in that convo and do promise to keep it good faith and to give you space to talk. Heated implies mutual aggression. It's just a character assassination. It would be, from your end of things, as if someone like Keemstar constructed a massive clip show out of every bad thing he had ever done, real or imagined, pulled exclusively from people who hate you, the whole time pretending he'd unearthed this massive closet packed full of skeletons, when in reality most of what he's waffling about is either imagined or long addressed. I have no reason to assassinate your character. You call my audience pedophiles. You call people defending me pedophiles. It's ridiculous. Pure ham content mill drama alert slop. Bro, don't act above any of that behavior. You do it routinely, you can't high road me. Apparently, though I don't see this myself, you condescended to me for thinking we were on good terms? You can't blame me for that misconception. All our previous interactions were pretty positive. We spoke briefly like twice in DMs, as far as I can recall. Maybe I'm misremembering. Look, I don't blame anyone for being suspicious of me. There are a lot of people out there who hate me and I also have a tendency to put my foot in my mouth. I definitely don't make things easy for people who want to defend me. I didn't condescend you, I just expressed surprise at the sentiment. I said you're a smart guy, talented speaker, funny, and I'm a fan of your content. I said that several times. But right now, as Poisoned Wells and Bad Faith Smears go, your show was actually more aggressive in its effort at character assassination than any weird Nazi or Keemstar type has been in the past. We are so far from good faith. To expect differently when I go on would be ridiculous. I literally have no clue how you can call it bad faith. That's why I think there is a convo to be had. We tried to look at the full context of everything and give thoughtful responses. I don't swell in the same internet space as you, so perhaps I'm just missing or misunderstanding something. Ethan, if you are a fan of my content or whatever else, don't you think the appropriate time to get my perspective on all of this would have been sometime before the surprise two hour mega segment where you react to everything people who hate me have ever compiled to try to smear me? Don't you think your ordering of events is a little off? And you've attacked my community likewise, and other streamers. I'm only sensing a desire for more content in an environment which has been constructed to deny me the ability to be taken seriously. Not sure how me saying I've enjoyed some of your videos suggests I owe you anything like that. Okay, I'll just say this. Even your language here is dishonest. It's not a matter of owing me anything. If you cared about my opinion on any of this, you would have sought it before doing a big surprise character assassination. I understand where you're coming from. Personally, I think it would be a good convo because I promise you I don't understand what was bad faith about my criticism, but I'm absolutely open to hearing you out. Obviously, the stuff we talked about is pretty heavy. I think you should have an opportunity to respond to our audience and give additional context, but it's up to you, obviously. I understand either way. You didn't care about my opinion then, nor did you now, but your numbers were good during that segment, no? You're framing that not wanting to be blindsided with a dishonest character assassination is somehow an irrational entitlement, I feel, is ridiculous. Think how what you say sounds to me, Ethan. Do you seriously expect me to believe your surprise that I think your coverage was bad faith? 
Who on earth wouldn't think that, under any circumstances, genuinely or otherwise? With all due respect, we spoke briefly in Twitter DMs twice. That's not what I would consider camaraderie. I talk about a lot of things and people and I have rubbed shoulders with a lot of people online. There are some people I would approach privately to discuss something like this, but against just being honest, our relationship is nowhere close to that. I'm not being dishonest. You're not even acting like you believe the things you said. If you actually cared about the gravity of your accusations against me, you wouldn't be pussyfooting around with this language. You'd be condemning me. What? Your tone doesn't match the claim. I don't know whether or not you believe you lied, but unfortunately it seems I've always had a bad read on your thoughts and feelings. Nothing new is under the sun. This has all been discussed on my channel openly. I welcome scrutiny, and as I am already hurt by these lies, I won't let you benefit from dishonesty twice. If you'd like to come on and talk about it, you may do so on my stream. I don't expect you to accept, and that's totally okay. I'm not entitled to your time or good faith. What's the difference between your stream and mine? I'll call into your stream if you want to host it. I really don't know what you expect. I need to be shouting at you and calling you a pedo in a private DM where we are trying to build a bridge for me to believe what I'm saying? I am trying to keep my mind open and be receptive to you. Why would I be screaming and belligerent? You said you didn't watch the episode. I'd like to know how you can say it's bad faith without watching it. Jesus Christ dude, I just checked your story. You're trying to balance this I didn't know was bad faith to compile a giant clip show attack and call you and your community and everyone who defends you a pedo. I'm so curious why you think that was bad faith. Please come on my show and tell me why while actively continuing that jeering disingenuous shitposting on your story. I'm so curious about your perspective, which is why I only ask for it after the character assassination. You're not owed the chance to offer explanations or context before the assassination. Good lord. No, I think not. You're free to say I pussied out or whatever, but for what it's worth, I don't think I'll ever believe you didn't believe you were lying this entire time. If anyone wants context, Lee's lies have been challenged and pulled apart a billion times on my channel, just as the disingenuous attacks against you have been on yours. Sorry that you think I'm lying, but I saw the shit in that folder. It's vile. Absolutely lolly. Girl looks like 13. And sucking off a horse. You need help, man. You keep trying to defend the shit you said, and cry that it's out of context, but it's not. And there's piles and piles more of it that further it reinforces everything. Seek help, bro. Please. It is genuinely not normal to be looking at that shit. Specifically the super young girl stuff. Point to me one lie I told. You haven't yet. And conveniently, I think, that is where the conversation ends. Now, I would like to speak directly to Vosh and address a good majority of the conversation. There was no character assassination with what Ethan has said about you. The only person that assassinated your character was yourself. The moment you revealed the folder, with all of the contents within it being absolutely discernible, and then going out of your way to excuse it on a live stream. All of the clips that were gathered against you are all valid pieces of evidence that show a clear pattern of behavior. Your quote unquote tendency as well to put your foot in your mouth also tells me that based on the circumstance you brought yourself in and all of the things you say that put you in such controversy, you most likely shouldn't be streaming in the first place if that is the case. It's also complete horseshit, pun intended, that you label all of these criticisms and accusations towards you as just lies. When there is quite literally concrete evidence of it, you can cry out of context all you want, but no context is going to make you look any better or innocent in any regard with all of the shit you spewed. Just cause Ethan was a fan of your content at one point, doesn't mean you are free from any criticism that comes from him. Ethan was simply reporting on what happened, he doesn't owe you the leverage of coming to your DMs beforehand. It's his channel, he can do what he wants. The conversation seems to end after Ethan pointed out the lolly stuff in the folder, so suffice to say, Vosh ain't getting out of the pedophile allocations. Oh, and not only did Vosh fans decide to come in full force on defending their favorite political horse streamer, but a few YouTubers have decided to join the fray. Those of course being Tipster, Keffles, and Jalen. And god almighty, could their defenses not be any worse. Starting off this complete shit show. Tipster decided it would be a great idea to run a blind defense for Vosh without even knowing that the contents within Vosh's folder did in fact contain Lolly. If you want my honest opinion about what happened with Vosh and the stuff that was on his computer, I think that he was insanely careless and I don't think that shit should have been on his computer. I think it's a, a real problem that he had that shit on his computer and I think he should be more careful in the future. Ah uh, yes, the problem is absolutely the carelessness of Vosh consuming porn on his computer and not the fact that he had lollicon images in there to begin with. Maybe you're right, tipster. He probably could have avoided everything if he just had those exact same images on his phone instead.
Uh, now, I know a lot of people are like instantly condemning him because like, oh, he had, you know, supposedly Lolly on his computer and therefore like he needs to be like canceled and like, you know, he's a pedophile now or whatever. And I just I tend to be a little bit more ch charitable in the sense that I feel like a lot of people on the Internet instantly want to assume malice where ignorance could be a simple answer. Hey, tipster, remember when you said you don't approve or condone the consumption of lolly content? I do not like lolly content. I do not approve of the creation or consumption of lolly content. And I do not defend lolly content under any circumstances. I have never defended the existence of lolly content and I never will. You said all of that, but because you are defending Vosh in this situation, you are inadvertently defending the consumption of lolly content, something that you said you would never do. Naturally, the ludicrous amounts of hypocrisy here would be shown. He put in so much effort defending Vosh on a few streams of his, and even himself on a few occasions, but all of this effort was futile because he did not know exactly what he was dealing with. It almost seems like a pattern at this point, because this isn't the only time that Tipster ran with the blind defense when it came to the context of Lollycon. Literally last year, Tipster was put on blast for defending one of his e-girls for liking Lollycon. He would be put in a position so bad that he would make this response video and try to separate himself from the commentary community. Well, looks like he found himself in that very position once again. Ethan from H3H3 also called out Tipster for defending Vosh as well, saying that he was pretty much condemning the lolly porn that was in Vosh's folder. Again, Tipster was completely unaware of the contents within the folder that he himself was defending, so you really gotta beg Tipster the question of why he even bothered to begin with. And so because of his completely idiotic actions, Tipster once again found himself playing Donkey Kong and coping about everything that's happened to him. Happy tipsterversary, everybody. My take on Vosh's previous takes is this, okay? I think that they were misrepresented in a way to make it seem like Vosh was being pro-child pornography or in favor of children having sex with adults, and it's just not true. Oh no, buddy. It's absolutely true. You're just being willfully ignorant. It is possible for an adult and a child to have a sexual relationship and for it to have positive outcomes on the child as well. Congratulations, you played yourself. Alongside Tipster's defense, we have Kethel's. Take this with a grain of salt because I don't know that much about Kethel's as a person or a content creator, but from what I have gathered, they used to be heavily associated with Tipster. As of the making of this video, Kethel's has now disavowed Tipster due to the recent events that took place in this situation. So all that I've seen is Keffels running the same blind defense that Tipster has, saying that what Vosh did is not as bad as people are making it out to be, as well as her saying that H3H3 is... somehow, miraculously, collaborating with Hassan and everybody else that is shitting on him. Do you feel like juiced some kind of a, like, Taylor Swift thing? Mm. Like the Super Bowl today? I mean, come on, dude. Evo! Yeah. Because it was, it wasn't about getting that kind of audience. He wants Hassan's audience back. That's what this is about. And attacking Vosh was a way of attracting Hassan's audience that he lost after Leftovers ended. It almost seems kind of coordinated in a sense, and this is obviously just speculation on my point. Well, given the With fact how... that like Ethan and I have DMs, like <laughs> if Ethan has DMs with me where he's giving me advice on how to fuck with people, I'm going to take a wild guess and say that these are very common uh, conversations behind the scenes with creators. I wouldn't even be surprised if H Hassan ended up like sending Ethan a bunch of Vosh receipts. You mean to tell me that Ethan not wanting to give someone a platform when they're exposed for having vile shit in their computer is the equivalent of stirring up drama for the sake of drama in the past? There's no way you could be this stupid. Kefels also tried emotionally manipulating people by providing the context as to how she has Ethan's phone number, being that Ethan gave it to her when she was feeling suicidal. I literally I have do. Ethan's phone number. He gave it to me. I'll try to call him later. Do not fucking call me. <laughs> I don't remember giving you my phone number. I don't remember talking to you on the phone, but do not fucking call me, please. Do you want to know the context of that? What's the context? It was back when Twitter circles was still a thing. And oh, I was, okay. I was suicidal. It was before I went to rehab. And he saw a Twitter circle where I was talking about how I wanted to just fucking end it. 
and he reached out and gave me his phone number. That's what the context was. Damn. Piece of shit. I will definitely, I'm not interested in talking on the phone or answering a call from an unknown number, frankly. You're like two steps away from getting me on the phone. <laughs> two great barriers are between us. She says, I'll try giving him a call later to see if this can be sorted instead of becoming online blood sports. Well, listen, that's kind of my business. <laughs> we're in a, At least he's we're honest. In a bloody business. Yeah, I'm glad that he's just honest. That was my takeaway, you know? In 2022, I really wanted to build a platform to make the world a slightly better place. That's why I did the charity streams I did. That's why I organized the Drop Kiwi Farms campaign. All of the things that I did were in pursuit of a goal to make this world a better place. And the biggest black pill to swallow has been to realize that none of these people actually give a shit about that. So from what I see, Ethan does that for a lot of people. So there's absolutely no way that he could even remember all of the numbers he reached out to. This is quite literally a case of emotional manipulation. Your response to all of this was to call Ethan a piece of shit because he doesn't want you to call him over the boss situation, where you were quite literally defending him of having Lollicon in his folders, even though you yourself, like Tipster, don't condone any of that and think it's disgusting. I also don't think that calling somebody's phone number over something like this is necessary at all, so why would you bring this up if you aren't trying to manipulate people? Isn't it funny how both of these people disavow anybody that consumes lolly content, yet actively defend someone for that because they are fans of their content? Oh, and during this whole charade, Keemstar was trying to get a conversation out of Keffels, but Keffels would only participate if she got paid. I think somebody's been projecting about how much of a piece of shit they are. She also left the conversation by just outright calling Keemstar a pedophile. By the way, she seems to have been very insistent for quite a while that Keemstar is a pedophile, and she has yet to even provide the context or even just a slight bit of evidence as to why she even thinks that. Very strange that you call somebody a pedophile effortlessly, but simultaneously defend Vosh. Crazy how that works. Keffels also got put on blast so bad that not only did she completely change her position on Vosh the last second and delete all of her tweets that are related to Vosh, but it got so bad that it caught the attention of Mudahar, who is now making a full deep dive into the history of Keffels, which includes the Catboy Ranch server, where she apparently groomed a lot of underage boys. All I gotta say is, honey, you got a big storm coming. All of the things that I did were in pursuit of a goal to make this world a better place. And the biggest black pill to swallow has been to realize that none of these people actually give a shit about that. Nah, bro, we just don't like you. At last, we arrive with Jalen. Jalen is probably the textbook definition of a hypocrite when it comes to this drama, because every defense that this person has made in favor for Vosh completely contradicts their standpoints. First of all, they tried denying the fact that Vosh had Lollicon in his folders, only to then backtrack and say that only one of the images out of several looked like Lolly, when that is blatantly untrue. There's also a group chat that Jalen is in that had a couple of my fellow commentary creator friends within it, notably Krillix and Mythical. One of their messages reads, He never said that. He is anti-Lollicon and he apologized and deleted the folders. That is a nothing point to make because I have to once again highlight the questions I asked earlier. How long has Vosh had these images? Also, if only one image was Lolly according to you, then why did he delete multiple? You could argue it's because porn in general shouldn't be shown on a stream, but if you've seen the images yourself enough to the point you think one of the images is Lolly, then what does that make the rest of the images? Diesel Patches' video showed censored versions of the images Vosh had, and there is definitely a lot more than just one picture that had Lolly in it. In fact, Vosh has multiple folders that could contain a lot more Lolly within them. Jalen also goes on to say that at this point, anyone who's looked at the images is as guilty as he is, which going by their logic, Jalen is inadvertently admitting to being guilty because they clearly have seen the images enough to claim that only one of them is Lolly. They also claim that Vosh isn't attracted to the girls in the images, but rather the... <sighs> large appendages of a horse. 
which also doesn't make sense considering the images themselves. If he wanted to get his jollies off to horses, he wouldn't look up Lollicon. He would look up horses, as weird and disgusting as that sounds, because saying that they were downloaded for horse PP sounds like deflection from the fact the images contained Lolly. Jalen also says that the debates Vosh had regarding CP are all taken out of context, then proceeds to link a video that, quote, debunks the allegations. But the video itself, since I decided to give it a watch while I was doing my research, doesn't really do a lot to exonerate Vosh from the situation. I think what Jalen fails to understand from the circumstance that Vosh brought himself in is that the issue is not just the clips themselves, but the clips on top of the fact he was caught with Lolly and bestiality on his computer. I said it before in regards to Keffels and Tipster as well, but Jalen, running this defense for Vosh is super pathetic and hypocritical. You have several tweets out there saying that Lollycon is pedophilia. How come the moment it's applied to Vosh, you can't call him out for it? Jalen also posted a video on Twitter showing off a compilation of Vosh with the caption, Vosh defends CP, obviously quoting the people calling out Vosh. I also don't think that this video helps Vosh at all because my main takeaway from it is that Vosh became an absolute hypocrite. We know that Vosh has gone against Lollicon in the past and made the obvious statements of CP being bad, but the moment you go against that by either arguing in favor of the consumption of CP or saving Lollicon images onto your computer, you are contradicting your standpoint and becoming a hypocrite. I guess hypocrisy just doesn't exist in their mind, but that's exactly what you and Vosh have been showcasing. You gotta get a life. Think about horse cars. Tacoma's right? weeping right now, bro. <laughs> wow, you're bringing up the horse DMs from 2018. Really? Really? You want to play that game? All right. I don't think Felix is a racist person. He really I mean, kind of just was really comfortable using that word. You can play that game. <laughs> it's a wonderful. Wow, Ethan, what the fuck? Dude, you should get a life. Why are you saying the N word in the F slur? That's not okay. You're not black. You're not gay. Wow, you homophobic racist. Dude, what's wrong with you? That's so fucked up. I know this is a joke, but <clears throat> do you guys know how many clips and screenshots are out there of Jalen saying the N-word with the hard R? <laughs> like, I don't think Jalen's even in a position to criticize or even remotely joke about that towards Ethan Klein. So now that we've gotten those people out of the way, we now have to talk about the actual response video that Vosh has made. The response to this drama is almost two hours long and pretty much goes over everything that people have been talking about. The video is simply titled, The Context Video. I'm not going to cover the entire thing because, put simply, it's a long video and it would take me ages to go over absolutely everything, so I will only cover the things that I want to highlight. So one of the arguments that Vosh makes, which is correlated to the arguments he's made about the immoralities of owning CP, is that it's hypocritical to be saying such things while we may be consuming things that were the product of child slavery. The problem with this argument is that most people don't know how the product is, well, produced. We don't know for the most part that there's supposedly child slavery behind these products that we buy, but everybody does know that CP is bad. They are not comparable in the slightest, especially because of the reason why CP is being distributed in the first place compared to literally any other product. I'd also like to point out that Vosh is making these types of arguments in regards to CP and how saying that is hypocritical when buying these products, but that would mean Vosh falls under that category since he has a computer, and he even admits to it. I don't really understand why you wanted to drive this point home when you're part of the problem that you're bringing up. Another thing to highlight, and this goes for the vast majority of his entire video, is that anytime criticism is brought up for these clips, he resorts to the I'm stupid response, always circling back to him being stupid in the past and overly edgy. While he's not entirely wrong in saying that, there is no actual response being made that exonerates himself from the situation and most of the time when he tries to clarify things, they either sound worse don't make sense, or are just bad arguments in general. The response video also caught my attention on certain clips I've never seen or even heard of, like when he showed a clip of him saying that the West hypersexualizes the youth in the context of him looking at the official poster of the Netflix show Cuties. He puts the blame on the West for something like this when Cuties was made in France. He also pinpoints it on the West when he's the one that got caught with Lolly on his computer. Like, I understand that this clip is old, but it still ended up biting him in the ass, which is funny to me because I've never seen some of these clips before until Vosh himself brought them up. All of these events led up to the point where we found you having Lolly in your folder, and people are speculating that you may have much more than just that one folder. The folder was called To Be Sorted, meaning he sorts this stuff into different folders, so who knows what else he has in his computer. And speaking of the folder, when he finally gets to that at the near end of his video, the big reason why he downloaded these images is because he is quote, a size queen. 
and likes big pee pee. Now of course we all know that Vosh has a horse fetish, but I think bringing this up in this context was an attempt at deflection. Like, oh, I didn't know that these pictures had lolly in it, I was too focused on the big dick on screen. That sounds like bullshit. I think he's trying to cover his ass because he got caught red handed. Another thing about this, and why it caught me off guard so much, was because in his previous defense, he tried claiming that he didn't see them as lolly characters, but rather as short stack goblins or something along those lines. It's like, well, calling them short stack goblins didn't work, I'll tell them I was too distracted by horse dick. It's such a nothing point as well, because regardless, you saved lolly into your folders, you actively in the past have condemned and expressed your distaste of lolly and the consumption of it and the defenses people make for it, and you saved it onto your computer. It's also really worth noting too for something he admitted in this section of the video is that he would go around classes looking at his phone and saving pornographic images on there. I don't think bringing this up was a good idea either because now you've made yourself sound like an absolute sex pest. Naturally when somebody gets addicted to porn they will stumble upon something much weirder and they may or may not get excited about it. I think Chud Logic put it best on his coverage of the situation and a big factor as to why Vosh is in this position. Don't be a pervert on the internet. It will only be your undoing. In conclusion, I don't know why this shit resurfaced to begin with. I think the moment the clips were out there, they should have been extremely highlighted in the first place. But with the video that Vosh put out just recently, I don't think it's the best conclusion we could have got, but we did get a conclusion regardless. Vosh was, without a doubt, extremely irresponsible with the way he handled this before, and extremely irresponsible with how he's handled himself for several years. I do appreciate the fact that Vosh took some sort of accountability for that, but but I also don't think the way he structured the video was the best either, as he would sometimes go on tangents about the people that despise him in the context of screenshots with zero substance. And he also made this video way too late. Because by the time he went through the controversial clips himself and did his best to address things, the damage had already been done. I think the way it should have gone is that the very moment these clips from Vosh were popping off and making him look bad, he would take the opportunity to address everything and improve himself. Because comparing these past streams to what Vosh is doing now, I do think he is improving. But the fact of the matter is, this drama popped off so much and caused such a stir because there was a pattern of behavior. And that pattern led to this very moment where he exposed himself of having these incriminating images saved into his computer. Thank you all for watching, be sure to subscribe and follow my Twitter because I need clout.